Hey everybody, today I want to do a review on the Mimo Genius 2. So for those who don't know, the Mimo Genius 2 is an upscaler and a downscaler. And as far as today's market goes, uh, for availability, it's probably one of the best downscalers you're going to get. Um, I heard that as of this year, uh, the company that manufactures the Mimo Genius 2 will actually discontinue this product. I don't know if that's entirely true, but I've heard several people say it. And, um, well, I guess if you're looking to get one of these, it's probably best to get one sooner than later. Okay. So, a little bit about the Mimo Genius 2 itself. As I mentioned, it's an upscaler and a downscaler made by an Italian company called Mimo Enterprises. Uh, there was an older model called the Mimo Genius 1, or just the Mimo Genius. And uh, it's a pretty rare find. I don't know if many people have it. Um, from what I read online, it turns out it's a little more difficult to use than this one. And um, this one is definitely a, uh, an upgrade to that one from what I've heard. This one comes with uh, an external power supply as you can see. I don't know if the older versions of the Mimo Genius 2 had an external power supply like this, but uh, this one definitely has one for sure. So going in a little further, you can see that it has a few buttons on the, on the bottom here. It has auto adjust, select menu, down, up, select monitor out, and then the numbers here represent all of the different resolutions that it can output on. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to talk about RGB uh, VG, which is 640 by 240, which is the 240p resolution that we're looking for. So on the side, you have inputs over here on the left, which are CGA, EGA, which I believe is the 9-pin like arcade um, uh, plug or the pinout. Um, VGA in, which would pretty much take the 480p resolution that we're going to be using in this video. And then there's this one, RGB. Uh, it's a 6-pin uh, RGB connector. Uh, from what I read online, it looks like that the six pins represent red, green, blue, ground, horizontal, and vertical. So I believe um, really old cabinets uh, or international cabinets, I don't necessarily know, but I know that some cabinets in the past have used that RGB connector and this Mimo Genius 2 complements those, um, that six pin configuration. And then there's also composite video in, which I probably won't be using ever, but it's here. And then on this side, you have your, your outputs. So you have HDMI for that upscaler, uh, the VGA, and then once again, the RGB. I read online somewhere that you can actually convert this RGB 6-pin cable into an RGBS um, connection, I suppose. I don't know too much about circuitry and um, connecting wires into a SCART lead or a SCART head, so it's a little beyond my uh, knowledge. But I'll leave a link in the description to show that website that has like the schematics to turn that cable into possibly RGBS. And um, the VGA for the Mimo Genius 2 outputs an RGBHV, so you'll have to use a sync processor like the Extron RGB 203RXI or whatever you have that takes um, 
an RGB HV connection and outputs it to RGBS. So, for this video, I'll be showing off my Dreamcast with the Toro box and my PS3 with the PS2 Linux kit. So I apologize in advance, but there's going to be almost no sound <laughs> for this entire video. I don't have any of my uh, connections, like any of my sound plugs like plugged in anywhere, so it'll just be the video. Uh, so here you go. The image is right there. That's the uh, Dreamcast. And I'll just zoom in a little closer and you can see those scan lines and blanking lines are very, very detailed, very crisp. So one thing I want to point out about this um, Mimo Genius 2 is uh, I think I've seen it in a few consoles, but <clears throat> when there are bright colors that are changing very fast on screen, there seems to be a change in color in the background, like kind of like a flash of like pink or a flash of green. It's really weird, but I'll try to do my best to show what I'm talking about here. Okay, so I'm up close. Just pick him for now. Yeah, you see? So it went from blue to like, kind of like that grayish background. I mean, it's just something I noticed about this um, this processor or the um, the Mimo Genius 2 right here. But regardless, regardless, those are the scan lines right there. Looks very, very nice, very clean, very crisp. One thing I did notice too that I can't really fix is um, I'll just zoom in here also to show. Looks very nice. Um, the bottom is a little cut off as you can see. I tried my best to make sure the resolution is on par with everything that um, I can do on my own. And it's just I don't know, I can't, I can't get the top and the bottom to match perfectly. Maybe it's the BVM I'm using, or maybe I just don't have enough information about how to use um, the menus, which I'll show right now, actually. Uh, so, I didn't show it before because you need an input signal to configure your um, input settings. So, one thing I will advise very strongly, try your best to avoid using the auto adjust button. Because one thing I noticed is the, um, the auto adjust, it really doesn't do this justice. Um, you'll have to take note also that this Mimo Genius 2 will save any settings that you have permanently. Like I do not know a factory reset like mode or a way to factory reset any of the settings here. So once you have settings set, it's you're gonna have to remember what you had before because it's very difficult for me to, at least it was for me, to go back and forth with the, um, the settings if you don't remember what they are. Okay, so select menu will open up the menu. It's all in Italian and the output resolution I believe is 640 by 480. No, that's the input, excuse me. So you go down and up and you'll see pixels nella riga oris 
A49, I have no idea what that is. Fase horizontal, tale? All right, my Italian's horrible. Fase verticale, I would assume this is horizontal and this is vertical. Uh, phase, I believe that's the word, phase vertical. Ampiese horizontale, 640 and 480. So those are my uh, horizontal and vertical resolutions or um, the size. The pixel phase is zero, contrast is 85, the light or luminosita, 128. This is the position of the um, OSD. So I have it on zero and eight, so it's up in this little corner. And the auto adjust, this is actually very important. And I won't show it in this video, but I've ran into a problem in the past where certain games will change resolution depending on them going from a cutscene to actual gameplay. So for example, some games will change into 480i on cutscenes and then during gameplay they'll change back to 480p. So what the Mimo Genius 2 will do if those options are turned on is it will auto adjust the resolution to match it best to your monitor or whatever you're using. So I highly recommend any auto adjusting, just turn it off. So I think there's two. So there's pixels, I believe. And then there's auto adjust DE. I turn them both off, both off, so. All right. So that's my Dreamcast and that's the options that I use for 480p. So now I'll just show the PS3. So, the uh, settings for the PS3, um, you'll have to um, make sure it's on, I think, SCART or Multi-AV Out, and then you'll have to uh, change the color space to RGB. So, really quick, let me just change this. So I'll just show once again what I was just talking about. So under display settings, you'll have to go to video output settings and then AV multi SCART. And then you'll have to use the RGB signal type and you'll have to set it at 480p. Okay. So in this one, I'll just show the Simpsons. See the bottom right there? That little extra little tab on the right side? I think that's due to just me not being able to adjust the horizontal and vertical phasing for this correctly. Once again, if I do it too much or too little, um, what happens with this is there's a little bit of screen tearing if the settings aren't like perfect. So it's a very sensitive um, setting. Oh, let me get closer, it's all white. Okay. like come on auto adjust hmm let me back up a little bit yeah it's being a little stubborn uh so yeah um one thing i did notice also 
if the settings aren't correct, yeah, you will get a little uh, screen tearing when you move up and down a little bit. But luckily for me, I think I fixed that issue. I put it up on the Shmups forum and I didn't know how to fix it before, but um, I think it's good here. Just show a little more. Getting my ass kicked here. Look at this. Fucking expert mode. Okay, let me just zoom in a little more. Show those uh, scan lines and such. Uh, I apologize for the the black bars. It's really annoying, but it's the best I can do right now. All right. Well. Okay. Uh, let me quit. Okay, so that is the Mimo Genius 2. I figured I'd do a video on this because I've never seen a video online about it. I've seen people talk about it on forums and all this, but there are very little people that have actually documented this on YouTube or anywhere else really for video. Um, my personal take on it I like it a lot. It's a very, uh, it's a really good downscaler, you know, for what it does. Um, you're probably not going to see a more crisper picture. And from what I gather, um, the Extron, and this is reading from the Hazard City website, which by the way, I should give credit to, and I'll definitely post a link of that page which inspired me to do this video. I believe it's a uh, Fudo, if I'm not mistaken. Um, from what I read on his review, it turns out that um, the, the lines that are joined together from 480p to 240p, um, I believe it starts evenly here. So instead of seeing like the, the, the picture going from line two to three, it'll go from one to two, and then it's just a very even looking picture. Um, one thing I will say I'm not a fan of is I don't like using the external, like, I guess, what would you call it? The extra step to go from the Mimo Genius 2 into a BVM. You'll have to use a, um, a sync processor. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me, but considering that I have the Extron Emotia, I think for me that that'll do it. You know, I don't um, necessarily feel that um, having this one would potentially replace the Extron uh, Super Emotia, but obviously that's all up to the person using the uh, downscaler. Whatever works for your setup, obviously, that's the one you should get. For me, I feel less boxes and less connections all over the place is probably something that I look forward to. But nonetheless, this is a great downscaler, highly recommend it, and honestly, if you can really get your hands on one, please do so. It's really, really nice. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time.